One of the most fun things in Hogwarts Legacy is coming across hidden secrets behind tapestries or noticing Easter egg references to the Harry Potter series that the developers have placed throughout the game. So I'm going to take you through a selection of some of the best ones we've found so far. So after this video, you can go and check them out for yourself in game. But even though I won't be discussing any main story narrative stuff here, I am going to drop a polite spoiler warning just as a heads up as I will be referencing lots of the game so far. So that's something to be aware of. And my big thanks to Warner Bros here in the UK who sent me across an early access code last week. So I was able to complete the game and create this video for you. And let's start off with the Weasleys because there's a lot of nods to that family in this game. One of the first ones being the side quest called Follow the Butterflies, which unlocks after you complete the Jackdaw story quest and is located just outside the Forbidden Forest in game where you'll need to follow the butterflies for a hidden cosmetic reward for your room of requirement. Now, this is in reference to the famous quote from Ron Weasley in the Chamber of Secrets. So listen to this. Why can not we follow the butterflies? And this all came about thanks to Hagrid's advice who told them to follow the spiders into the Forbidden Forest to understand more about the basilisks. So a nice nod from the devs there. But speaking of Ron, you may have noticed the transfiguration spell in game is a cup with a rat tail. Well, this is another reference to the Philosopher's or Sorcerer's Stone, if you're stateside, where Ron tries to turn his rat scabbers into a cup, but ultimately ends up combining the two. There's also a third Ron Weasley Easter egg in the PlayStation only Hogsmeade quest where you come across a life-size chessboard, which is another nod to the Philosopher's Stone Challenge where Ron sacrifices himself by saying this. Night to H3. And you can actually hear the poltergeist say the same thing here. Listen to this. What's this? A game within a game? Ooh, ooh, night to H3 which is another very subtle Easter egg. And I really hope they actually make this a full-size chess game in the future. Now, whilst you're in Hogsmeade, you can visit Zonko's Joke Shop, which was a famous location that sold pranks and fun magical items in the Wizarding World. And if you take a closer look around the shop, you may notice two small boys with red hair and hand-me-down jumpers that look exactly the same, which perhaps is a subtle nod to them being twins, which could also be a reference to Fred and George Weasley, who then went on to create Weasley's Wizard Weasley's Joke Shop in Diagon Alley. Now, the Weasleys, in the Harry Potter books are known to pass down their clothes from siblings as they didn't have a lot of money of course so this makes sense as an easter egg here and of course Professor Matilda Weasley and Gareth Weasley in game are the ancestors of the Weasley family but we don't know yet exactly how they're related as the family tree doesn't go that far back. Now even though we unfortunately don't have Quidditch as a playable sport in this game there is a huge amount of references to it in fact if you head to Madame Kagawa's office the flying teacher at Hogwarts you can see a miniature Quidditch game taking place on her table with both teams scoring goals, which is an insane amount of detail when you really think about it. In fact, if you head to the Quidditch pitching game, they have included and created the same type of infrastructure that you may recognize from the Chamber of Secrets film, where Harry and Draco are chasing the snitch at the edge of the pitch, flying underneath the scaffolding. So it's definitely worth trying to recreate that scene in game as it's quite difficult to do at max speed when you're on your broom. But one of the things I really appreciated was when you undertake your flying class in game, the cinematic team have have mirrored a lot of the camera work from the Philosopher's or Sorcerer's Stone film in regard to the flying lesson scene as you can see here because there's so many similarities which adds to that immersion that we are the ones learning how to handle a broom and you can also obtain the full Quidditch captain's robes in game by completing all the landing platforms located throughout the world for a full Quidditch look and if you stay on the main menu screen when you log in for around about a couple minutes or so your character will try and grab a snitch which is also hidden around the game just like the one in the Gryffindor common room. Now, speaking of common rooms, one of the first people you'll meet if you're sorted into Slytherin House is Ominous Gaunt, who will play a role in Sebastian Sallow's side quest if you choose to do it in game. But if you don't though, you won't engage with him again, but he does belong to the House of Gaunt, who are direct descendants from Salazar Slytherin himself and who are a pure-blooded and incestual family that frequently married cousins to keep their lineage pure, which may be one of the reasons why Ominous is blind in the game, as that could be a very subtle nod to the toll that excessive inbreeding has on families. Incidentally, Voldemort's grandfather was Marvolo Gaunt and would be a potential descendant of Ominous if you weren't aware of that connection in the series. In fact, if you do continue down Seb's questline, Ominous will use his family ability of parcel tongue, which allows a witch or wizard to talk to snakes to open up a secret office that was created by Salazar Slytherin himself whilst he was at the school. And if you read a letter he has subsequently left on his desk, Salazar states that he left a creature 
creature in a deep sleep, which when awakened will cleanse the school of muggle-born witches and wizards in the future, which is an in-game nod to the Chamber of Secrets and the Basilisk inside it. And wouldn't you know, if you travel to the lower ground staircase flu powder network in the castle and then proceed through this route in the Slytherin dungeons, you'll enter the girls' bathroom. And if you just zoom in on one of the taps on the left-hand side, you'll see a snake embossed on the tap, which is where parcel tongues need to speak the word open to then open the Chamber of Secrets, which is a very cool detail indeed. Now, if you're enjoying the video so far or learned something new, and only if you wouldn't mind, a very quick like down below really helps me out on YouTube. So thank you very much. And do subscribe if you're new here. I've got lots more Hogwarts Legacy videos just like this coming to you as quickly as I can make them. So it'd be great to have you along for the ride. Now, speaking of bathrooms, if you fast traveled to Professor Fig's classroom on the Flu Powder Network and then follow this route I'm taking now, you'll enter the second floor girls bathroom, which is where Harry Potter, Ron Weasley and Hermione Granger all took Polyjuice Potion with the intention of sneaking into the Slytherin common room to find out who the heir of Slytherin was in the Chamber of Secrets books and films. And that didn't work out too well for Hermione, who mistakenly transformed into a cat after adding its hair to the potion instead of Slytherin's Millicent Bulstrode. And if we head to the last cubicle in this bathroom, you can see a green potion brewing away amongst a variety of books, which is a clear nod to this in the series. But speaking of animals, there is a nod to Newt Scamander in the game as his animal companions, that being his Niffler and Picket, his bow truckle, are having a mandrake tea party on a hill overlooking Hogsmeade. And even though you can't sit down with them on the rug, you can interact with the tea and have a cup yourself. And whilst we're talking about Scamanders, Rolf Scamander, a descendant of Newt, went on to marry Luna Lovegood, who used to enjoy wearing her Spectre Spec spectacles, which were given away as a freebie in the Quibbler magazine, which her dad was the editor of. Now, these glasses allowed the wearer to see Raxperts, which were invisible creatures that flew floated in and out of your ears, causing your brain to go funny, with the spectacles being described in the books as making you look like a multicolored owl, which is what I think the devs have done here with these designs in game. So keep a lookout for Raxperts. Now let's talk about a very famous passageway you may want to experience yourself in game, which is called the One-Eyed Witch Passageway, which was a secret tunnel on the third floor that led from Hogwarts to the cellar of Honeydukes in Hogsmeade. Harry famously learning this off Fred and George when they gave him the Marauder's Map, which is what I think the devs have also done here with this quest as Gareth Weasley gives you this side quest specifically and even tells you the password that is Descendium, hence the quest name being called Descending for Sweets, which you can obtain by fast traveling to the Viaduct Courtyard Flu Flame Network. And I won't spoil what happens in this passageway, but it's certainly worth doing for yourself as far as side quest goes. But speaking of side quests, another one you may want to take a look at is the Dedalian Key Quest given by Nelly Ogspire in the Transfiguration Courtyard after you complete your first quest in Hogsmeade where she asks you to run around the castle to locate these flying keys to then slap them into the cabinets which are also dotted around the castle so then you can pick up these house tokens and if you manage to acquire 16 of them you'll be able to pop them into your house chest back in your house common room to then unlock the house exclusive relic robes for your character. Now we've seen these flying keys before in the Sorcerer's Stone as Professor Flitwick enchanted a whole flock of flying keys in the third chamber of the Philosopher's Stone trials with the keys and doors being enchanted to be impervious to the unlocking charm, meaning you couldn't just unlock the door in question with a spell. You had to place one of these flying keys in it to then open it up, and this quest is most certainly a nod to that. But speaking of Flitwick, he was the conductor of the famous frog choir at Hogwarts, who usually practice singing their songs in the Great Hall and the Bell Tower, which you can actually reach by traveling to the Transfiguration Classroom Flu Powder Point, and then following this route that Neek is taking now, which I'll speed up for you until you enter the bell tower auditorium and there you'll find frogs ready to be conducted for their daily choir practice now what about Dumbledore is he in the game well no he isn't even though he's technically alive at the time of when this game takes place that being the late 1800s but if you fast travel to the Ravenclaw tower and then head to the grand staircase you'll notice quite a unique portrait of a wizard that looks exactly like Richard Harris who famously played Dumbledore in the Philosopher's Stone and the Chamber of Secrets and sadly passed away in 2002 now of course there is a lot of wizard paintings around Hogwarts, but I do think the resemblance is quite uncanny. So a raise of the glass to Mr. Harris and Dumbledore there, 
I think. And interesting to note in HP lore, phoenixes are very rare creatures with only two that have notably been domesticated by wizards. The first of course being Forks who belong to Dumbledore and the second being owned by the New Zealand Quidditch team called Sparky who was their team mascot. And now thirdly actually, you if you do progress the Room of Requirement side quest with Deke. Now it's not said that this phoenix is Forks as I believe Forks was a wild phoenix until he met Dumbledore but with phoenixes being incredibly rare and with this one currently being in the British Isles close to Hogwarts and immortal I wouldn't be surprised if there is some sort of loose connection which we may see come about in future game installments. Now we know that the headmaster is Phineas Nigellus Black who was the ancestor of Sirius Black and we thankfully have a great easter egg in this game about Sirius who is one of my favorite characters of the series because if you head to the charms classroom flu powder network fast travel point and then venture up the staircase in Professor Ronan's office through to the battlements you'll come across a cage which is the very same cell that Sirius Black was imprisoned in in Hogwarts whilst he was awaiting the Dementors kiss in the Prisoner of Azkaban books and films. Now Harry and Hermione famously used their time turner to travel back in time, save the Hippogriff Buckbeak and fly him to Flitwick's office tower where Sirius was being kept who then flew off into the moonlight on the back of Buckbeak. Now Sirius was unfortunately killed by Bellatrix Lestrange in the Order of the Phoenix via the Avada Kedavra killing curse which we can also learn in this game with the developers creating the spell route as a visible lightning bolt scar that is of course in reference to Harry Potter and the killing curse that was inflicted upon him by Lord Voldemort. Now back to the castle because there's a couple details you should definitely look out for here. The first being house elves which only come out at night to clean the castle which you will occasionally come across if you sneak up on them and they will disappear when they spot you as they don't want to be seen by students. In fact you can head down to the kitchens and have a look yourself with the nearest fast travel point being the grand staircase and if you just follow the route that Neek is taking here you'll reach a portrait of a bowl of fruit where all you need to do is tickle the pair to gain access with the house elves then preparing all the food on the tables down here below which would then be magically transported directly above to the tables in the great hall that are in the exact same position so that's how that kind of works in lore but if you're not in Hufflepuff house and continue down the corridor after you exit the kitchens you can try and force your way into the Hufflepuff common room but it does have a defense mechanism that being vinegar straight to the face so go give this a go and see for yourself if the Hufflepuff common room sees you as an intruder now there's a lot of secret passageways and tunnels that are not attached to any quests in this game and I just want to run you through a few of them that you may have missed such as using the slowing spell Arresto Momentum on the clock tower which you can then fast travel to at the clock tower courtyard flu flame and once it is halted it'll then open up a secret room for you nearby to loot a nice few rewards you can also travel to the faculty flu powder point by the grand staircase and then follow the route Nika is also taking here and once you do reach the top of the stairs you'll come across a fireplace which if you cast the glacius charm on it will freeze the fire and allow you to creep through to a secret room with more rewards available now thirdly if you fast travel to the bell tower courtyard flu flame point and then follow this route Nika is taking again you'll end up coming across a tapestry which is very easy to miss but if you run at the K it'll then open up for you with more rewards to be found inside. Now if you're looking for more tips and tricks so you can get the most out of this game do click the video on your screen right now and I'll see you there in just a second but if you're still here my huge thank you to my co-content creator Nika who has joined me in early access and has scoured the game for the best info for you as well as Dennis Donut, James, and Iron Knight, who has helped with footage for this video. Butterbeer is on all of them, and I'll see you in that next video.